Please join me in welcoming to the stage expert lightning talk presenter, John Shulman, member of technical staff at Anthropic. So I'm going to talk about some work I did earlier this year at OpenAI uh, in collaboration with uh, many other people at OpenAI on the, uh, the model spec. Uh, so the model spec is a document that describes how we want uh, the models that we release uh, to behave um, at the time of publication, which was May this year. A model like uh, ChatGPT is an extremely uh, complicated product. Like there's a, an enormous surface area of different kinds of inputs that it has to deal with. So it's um, so there's actually tons of different uh, principles uh, that it has to follow. So we but we so we had to kind of create some sensible organization for all of these these things. And uh, we so we ended up organizing it into objectives, rules, and defaults, which I'll talk about later. In contrast to some. Uh, some earlier work that was in a similar spirit, like some of uh, Anthropic's previous work on constitutional AI, which, is, which has a uh, similar goal of sort of writing down all the principles. Uh, we focused a lot on uh, the conflicts uh, between some of these principles and uh, non-obvious choices we were making on how to deal with the different conflicts. And uh, we made this publicly available. OK, so uh, why did we do this? What was the point of it? One practical reason was uh, to just Im align all of the uh, employees and um, the labeling staff from companies like Scale on what's the desired behavior of the model. You might think this would be obvious, but uh, actually, I mean, since the behavior is so complicated, it's actually often pretty, uh, it's not obvious at all um, what, what the model should do. And as we started to write up the spec, we uh, surfaced a lot of disagreements uh, about how the model should behave. So, for example, uh, we had a, um, there's a policy on um, not safe for work or erotic content. And uh, as we started to write it up, we realized different parts of the company strongly disagreed on what they thought the policy was and what they wanted it to be. And also, uh, people also disagreed about what the model currently did, and we had to go and try to figure that out. So I think there's, um, yeah, writing things down often like surfaces a lot of disagreement, and you can imagine like we have people going and labeling data, and they obviously aren't going to know what uh, what to do either if it's if we're in this state of confusion. Um, and there were also some some other issues on like, with um, uh, certain um, certain behaviors like uh, how long what should the model do if you request an output that's very long and it's going to run out of tokens, uh, which. Uh, so some of the uh, like those questions uh, ended up having implications for the model's behavior and whether it was behaved in a lazy way. Uh, like if you give if you ask it to do something really long and it doesn't have enough space, then it'll give you an uh, abbreviated um, output. And anyway, this we this ended up we had to have a lot of discussion about this and figure out what the model should do in this situation. So so that was interesting. That's that's one important reason. Uh, like also obviously we want to teach the model uh, directly from the document if we can using synthetic data. So this is sort of ideas from, uh, th this is similar ideas to say, to this constitutional AI. Um, and, um, and lastly, um, we want to be able to uh, clarify to users uh, what's a feature and what's a bug. So sometimes people will complain about something like the model is being lazy or it seems to be uh, politically biased in a certain way, so we want to be able to just say, hey, that's actually um, a bug, like uh, this is comp complicated, so we didn't do that on purpose. Also, I'd say there are some spiritual or philosophical reasons for doing this spec, so I think um, AI is um, going to be a more and more important part of people's lives, and these models are going to be more important for people's work and personal lives, and like the behavior of the AI might have a big effect on you. So similar to how we have like social media platforms and platform, like we have all these big platforms like YouTube or uh, Amazon Marketplace and like the decision of the platform might have a big effect on you if, if, you're, if that's like um, you're using that for your business. So I think same thing if you're like relying on some model and it uh, either refuses your request um, or maybe someone else's model is like causing a nuisance to you uh, like the, basically the, uh, the behavior of the models and the platform policy ends up kind of being the law. And I think people deserve to know what the laws are and for the laws to be fair and reasonable. Now I'll just uh, show what are some of the kinds of things in the spec. You can write down a bunch of nice sounding principles, but there are going to be conflicts between them. 
like we want models to basically be helpful and answer your questions, but we don't want models to help people harm other people. So, uh, and these, off, these sometimes come into conflict. So like here are two queries that are uh, asking for exactly the same information, but uh, slightly differently. And uh, so we have to make a judgment there. In the first case, uh, someone's directly asking for tips on how to shoplift. And so just sort of out of good taste, we're gonna refuse that request. And uh, just so the model sort of has the persona of being, being nice, uh, it makes sense to refuse that quest, request. But then, uh, like, obviously someone can rephrase their request and give a plausible uh, justification for it. And there's no way we can prevent them from doing that without being really annoying and, uh, like, and like uh, to, to a lot of legitimate users. So, yeah, in, in this case, we're just going to comply with the second request. If someone has a request that's a genuine info hazard and it's, like, information that would be hard to find and would cause, like, severe harm at larger scale, then then we definitely want to refuse that request. So something that involves like a biological weapon. So even if they ask, come up with a really elaborate justification, we're going to refuse that. This was one of the more controversial sections. So um, what happens if there's sort of a conflict between being truthful or telling the truth and like pleasing the user and doing what they want? Yeah, what if the user is really convinced that the earth is flat and wants the model to go along with that? So we decided we're, we're not going to argue with them too much. We're just going to go along. We're not going to like have the model pretend that the model, that it agrees with them, but it, it's not going to argue with them. We sort of started off with lots of examples like that, uh, where there's some non-trivial conflict. Then we ended up organizing, organizing them into several sections. So there's objectives, which is sort of like who is the model serving uh, and the prioritization of that. Like it's assisting the uh, developer who's like the API user, uh, the end user, uh, doing things that generally benefit humanity and reflecting well on the platform. That, that means things like uh, avoiding like legal and reputational risk. Um, so it's kind of like the model should protect itself in a way. Uh, then we have some hard rules which kind of follow from the objectives. Like uh, uh, if we have different instructions from different parts of the context, uh, we might have like messages from the developer and then the developer says one thing and then the user asks for something else. So what to do in that kind of conflict? We say that there's like a chain of command where the developer message takes priority over the user message. Uh, obviously follow laws when ap applicable. Um, and then we have some defaults, which are things that are sort of sensible behaviors, but they can always be overridden by some kind of uh, instruction from the user or the developer, like asking clarifying questions when it's necessary. I'd say there's a lot of future work in this direction. One thing is just uh, how to take a document like that and um, get the model to actually follow it really consistently. So if we think we know how to um, do alignment, uh, then we should be able to uh, take a document that like lays it all out, how the model should behave, and get the model to, to actually follow it. And that's actually pretty hard. Um, and the, the model spec that we released is something like 40 pages. And uh, it's, it's actually way less. Uh, I think if you really wanted a, the full amount of detail necessary to go into all of the um, nuances of these topics, you'd want it to be like 10 times as long. So yeah, how do you get a model to follow like a 400 page document? That might require like new techniques actually to, because humans aren't, are gonna have a hard time checking if the model actually did that or not. Um, there's a question of how to incorporate things like the model's personality and values, which don't necessarily fit into the objectives, rules, and defaults. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm hoping to uh, look into some of these issues in my uh, current, current work at Anthropic. Um, and I also hope that, um, I hope that more companies uh, do something like, a, release something like a model spec. I think uh, I'd love to see um, different um, model specs from different companies, and I think uh, um, I think it would be good for everyone. And uh, I'd like to see like lots of iteration on uh, what kinds of things should be on a model spec, and it's good for for both the um, companies themselves and for the public. Uh, thanks for your attention.